Welcome to the Hyper Guy Motivational Podcast. I'm so, so lucky to have this wonderful man with me, Steve Maxwell, <laughs> from, from Maxwell Strength and Conditioning. And he's got so, I mean, we're going to talk about his jiu-jitsu career a little bit again. He's just an overall amazing guy and one of the nicest people I've ever met. And thank you so much for being on, Steve, again. Hey, thanks for having me. I, uh, I, I like uh, positive, upbeat people like yourself. Yeah, well, I think you and I are kindred souls and spirits in that, Steve. <laughs> I made a connection with you when I first met you, and I got nothing but love for you, my friend. So yeah, I know I know, I know, know you only have a short time. So, you know, if I could, I, I probably could write a book on the number of questions that people say, please ask Steve, please ask Steve. So first, I want to ask you, what is your, and this is one of the first questions that everybody asks, what is his average day like, Figueroa? Well, <laughs> uh, it changed drastically during the shutdowns, you know, the pandemic, because if you know, before I was a digital nomad and I was just basically traveling from place to place, country to country, <clears throat> staying for a few weeks here, a few weeks there, doing uh, seminars about fitness and wellness and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So, you know, wearing three hats. And uh, now I can add longevity into the mix because I'm in my 70s now. <laughs> so I, uh, my, so my, my, obviously my daily routine changed a little bit, but it almost always starts in the early morning when I first wake up with a prayer of thanksgiving and gratitude. And I'll give gratitude for 10 things. It, you know, whatever. I, it just comes into my mind. And then uh, I'll do like head massage, ear massage, eye massage, and a lot of different esoteric uh, uh, exercises, Taoist yoga, which is basically Qigong, Chinese stuff, uh, energetic stuff for my eyes and my ears, my tongue, throat, uh, working fingers, uh, working neck and spine, all while still laying in bed. Uh, genital massage, which is uh, part of uh, a, a bigger overall male health protocol called Iron Crotch. And I work, uh, then, then I work some spinal twists, and then I get up. And that whole routine takes me about 15 minutes while still in bed. And then uh, it's always a neti pot, tongue scrape. Uh, Ice cold shower when I was in Washington. I've moved, so the water is warm down here. Not, not even bother, you know. <laughs> not even a challenge. And then I'll do a little bit more uh, Qigong uh, mobility movements. And then I'm set up. And then I'll have maybe a little coffee, uh, look at my emails, and about a half an hour later, a little breakfast. I'm not really into intermittent fasting or anything. I don't think there's any real advantage. I'm pretty lean anyway, so I'm not worried about losing weight. I'll have a nice little breakfast. And then uh, now that I moved from Washington to South Carolina, uh, I'll go to jujitsu. Uh, the classes are mid-morning. When I was in Washington, I would go out and I would take a walk or uh, with breathing exercises or a little run. Uh, often I make my living doing Zoom sessions. So a lot of times I'll have early Zoom sessions and I'll hit those right away. And I'll have intermittent Zoom sessions throughout the day. And I take like little movement snacks, little movement breaks here and there. And yeah, it's pretty much my day. And then, you know, at the end, I have regular planned meals. And at the end of the day, uh, I usually just retire pretty early. I'm usually in bed by 8.30 or 9. Well, so what's your, what is like the importance of sleep in your mind? Um, how many hours of, uh, of sleep do you get a night? Uh, anywhere between 7 to 10, depending on how tired I am. I never sleep with an alarm. I engineer my life so that I just wake up when I wake up. You know, I, I, I never have myself so leveraged and so scheduled that I have to use an alarm to wake me. I wake up naturally, whenever. 
And, you know, my body pretty much gets the sleep it needs. So sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more. I don't have any particular, I just go to bed early. Those hours between before midnight are your most restorative, most restful hours. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like being in the rhythm of the universe, you know? It's, it's the natural rhythm, kind of going to bed with the sun and getting up with the sun. So you talked about longevity and you, ever since I've, I've followed you for, I've followed you Steve forever. Um, that's really, I, I, in fact, I talked to a lot of my friends about this is that your focus has always been, and even though like, I, I think like you said, your focus now you'll talk about it, but you've always talked about longevity and making sure about, you know, healthy joints and so forth. What do you do in terms of like keeping such a positive mindset about your health and also the, you're, you're so sharp mentally. How do you, what are the kind of things that you recommend people to do? Well, it's, it's really important to, to feed your body well. And I really steer clear of processed foods. Try to eat as organic as I can, but you know, you gotta be careful. The uh, organic uh, foods can be a bit of a scam, you know, but I try to eat as pure a source of food as I possibly can. So feeding yourself well is very important. This may be kind of a little taboo subject. Maybe people don't like to talk about, but keeping your bowels clean, making sure that you are not constipated in any way. So a regular bowel, very important. People don't realize that their whole immune system is created in their gut. So if you have candida or you know, yeast, uh, gas, bloatedness from improper eating, too much sugar, eating uh, eating too much in one meal, uh, poor food combining, whatever. Any of those indigestion problems, this is going to cause a real problem with your immune system. And you're going to just be susceptible to any cold or flu or anything that comes down the pipe. And of course, on the, that, having a good gut health keeps your mind sharp and clear. It's kind of like chicken or the egg. Does, you know, good thinking and good mind help you establish good habits to stay healthy? Or does doing the good habits and the good health keep your mind clear? It's probably a little bit of both. But you can't have one without the other. You cannot be upbeat and positive if you're fighting illness and sickness and aches and pains and inflammation all the time. And if somebody's if somebody says, how do you maintain your discipline? Like your discipline in your food and your exercise habits, what advice do you give to someone that says, you know, I'm having a hard time getting going. I'm just not as disciplined as you, Steve. What do I do? Well, you gotta get started. You know, every every journey starts with that first step or two. And you, once you get going for like two weeks, it becomes ingrained. Only takes about two weeks to establish, you know, a really, really good habit. And you know, to tell the truth, the consequences of not doing it are so great that there's just no question in my mind I'm going to do it. I'd, I'm not willing to suffer the consequences of not doing these health habits. I don't want to end up like a lot of my elderly relatives. I mean, if everyone listening thinks about, uh, oh, I don't know, think about your, your, your aged grandparents on both sides of the family, or uh, aunts and uncles, or even your own mother and father, and think about their health habits, the way they look, whether they're suffering with a lot of health problems, that's what's in your genetics, basically. Now, I don't believe that you have to express negative genes. I believe you can overcome genetics a lot through good habits, environment. And if you don't take care of yourself, you're going to end up like grandma and granddad, mom, pop, same exact ailments that they suffer. You know, some people might have great parents that are really healthy and strong and fit. But I would say the majority of people, uh, their aging relatives don't fare so well. 
and they look pretty bad, and they they they're not doing well at all. So for me, having a lot of people around me on both sides of the family that were sickly and not doing well, you know, the typical heart problems, strokes, uh, dementia, uh, all you know, rheumatoid uh, arthritis, uh, regular uh, arthritis. It, it osteoarthritis. Uh, it was for me. There's no way, man. I'm not going to suffer these the same thing. The, the consequences are too great. I want to stay independent and mobile until I die. I do not want to be in a nursing home. I do not want to be in an extended care facility. I do not want to take ten years to die and be using a a cane, a walker, or or wheelchair. I don't. I want to make sure that I'm able to do what I want to do right up until the day I leave this earth. The only way you can do that is by really remaining very, very healthy and to do your best to encompass great health habits. And it's not that hard. You know, it's not that hard. Everyone knows what they should do. You know, everyone needs to exercise. Doesn't have to be a killer workout, but you definitely need to work work out and exercise. Everyone knows you need to eat well, plenty of vegetables, plenty of of good quality animal proteins. You know, keep the grain to a minimum. Stay off all the junk foods and the sugars and the desserts and all that kind of stuff. You know, everyone knows what what, what those things are. You know, uh, I, obviously not drinking alcohol and smoking. Smoking's a really bad one. And then there's like little add-ons that really can add a lot to your health and uh, in the some of the st- stem cell research, you know, they do for the body regenerating itself. Seems that cold water, ice cold showers or cold baths uh, are incredibly rejuvenating to the body. In Washington State, it was great. Even in summertime, those showers were cold, man. But uh, here in South Carolina, that I, I just moved, water's not very challenging. I'll have to wait till the winter time. The other thing is some type of very hard interval training. Doesn't have to be sprinting or anything, but doing some type of high intensity interval training once a week, twice a week, has profound effect on your hormonal systems and your 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 aging system and keeping a grateful mind being expressing gratitude every single day because you basically get out of life what you concentrate and think about and if you're thinking about all the stuff you don't have or all the things you don't like or all you know worrying about all of the problems well that you're just going to get more because you're you're laying your focus and concentration on those negatives. But if you think about all the things you like and all the wonderful blessings you have, by focusing on that, you create situations where you get more of the same. Some people might think that's too simplistic, but it's been definitely working for me over the last few years. And what do you think about supplementing vitamins? Do you think that you need those or... There was a time I did it. I thought it was a big waste of money and time. But uh, recently, uh, I came in contact uh, with a guy that does hair mineral analysis. This is a couple of years ago. And here they can pinpoint exactly what you need. See, if you just take supplements willy-nilly, how do you know you're not creating further imbalance? Let's say, for example... People are told you need magnesium. You start taking magnesium. But you need about four or five different minerals to support the utilization of that magnesium. So by taking magnesium by itself, you may be creating a huge imbalance of these other minerals. They have to be in a ratio, you see. Or maybe you're taking a toxic form of magnesium in the supplement that you're buying. And that's just like one little mineral. But, you know, if, you, if you're if you just taking stuff willy-nilly because Men's Health Magazine is, 
you know, that's the supplement of the month or some somebody online is selling this or that or the other thing, you don't know whether it's doing you more harm than good. However, by getting your hair analyzed, the laboratory can tell you exactly where you're deficient and what toxic minerals and toxic metals are in your system and what you need to get rid of. And then you can pinpoint exactly what it is you should be taking. That's what I do. And I'm actually working. I'm actually working with a the guy. They use a system that was created by Paul Eck it's called the development diet. And they use hair mineral analysis to determine what toxic metals there might be in your system. Because let's face it, we live in a very polluted world. I mean, pollution levels are really high. And it gets into our food, the animals we eat, the plants we eat. So it's impossible to keep it out of your system. But your body's very good at getting rid of stuff. You just have to have the right ratios to help your body rid itself of all this stuff. What about stress management, Steve? I, I know um, you're so active and you have, I don't even know how you do it. I think you've been on, you know, you've probably been on, on hundreds of podcasts now. Not, and we're just, no, we're just, we're just talking about podcasts. We're not talking about TV shows and magazines. And, and then you travel and you do seminars. I, I assume that can be stressful. How do you handle all that stress? Well, once again, the positive mindset. Uh, I meditate every day. Uh, I've been using a form of meditation called pulling down, where you pull etheric energy down through the body and out through the bottoms of your feet. It's an ancient, ancient technique going thousands of years back. You're basically pulling energy through the fine energy channels in the body. And while you're doing it, your mind has to be completely in the moment. And you can't be thinking about this and that and the other thing. It's a wonderful meditation. You, you see uh, sometimes on YouTube or whatever, uh, people doing this type of movement. Like she called, That's what they're doing. They're pulling energy down through the body and out the feet. The energy should be downward moving. And that has a profound effect on your energy levels, your, your body's ability to heal, and uh, a profound effect on your, your positive outlook. And it's, it's very relaxing. And it kind of restores you, like uh, sort of like recharging a battery. You know, like rechargeable batteries. They start going down, you have to plug them in and charge them back up. That's what the pulling down is like. But I do other types of meditation too. And what about metabolic conditioning? Can you explain what that is and why it's important? Well, it was first coined by Arthur Jones back in the 70s. They did the, a project at West Point uh, Military Academy called Total Condi Project Total Conditioning. And they basically took these military cadets through a very strenuous circuit of Nautilus machines. And these, and, and then they had control groups that were doing their regular weight training with the barbells and such. And people that were basically practicing the fitness tests involved in the uh, testing of these cadets. You know, your, your typical push up and two mile run and this and that and the other thing, like, like the army's always done. And the people in the, the project Total Conditioning, uh, they were young, healthy uh, military cadets. And a lot of them were getting very nauseous and had to stop the training midway during the workouts. And Arthur Jones was looking at these guys thinking, well, they're certainly strong enough to handle the weights that we're, we're, we're asking them to lift. And their cardio systems are certainly strong and robust. These are young, you know, 20-somethings. Uh, so what is it? Why is it that they're bodies are literally shutting down halfway through the workout and they're unable to continue. And he, he, he coined it metabolic conditioning. It's when you combine low rest or uh, high level uh, cardio respiratory work with strenuous muscular work. 
And, you know, circuit training was uh, a popular way to do this back in the day. And when you get to the point where you, you can go from exercise to exercise to exercise with little or no rest, you get a tremendous conditioning effect on your, both your heart, your lungs, and your whole metabolism, including your uh, endocrine system and everything else. That was the old Nautilus circuit. It's not the way to uh, become a power lifter. It's not the way to become a strength specialist. This is for conditioning purposes or even just regular health. I do the same thing myself. I usually do a circuit of isometric and or body weight exercises with less than 10 second rest between each one. It's very demanding. Heart rate is very high and you know respiratory rate is quite high, but you know I control it. But if you're not used to it, when you first start out, it can make you feel a little nauseous. You know, you, you get a little acidic. You start getting uh, woozy. Uh, you, you know, you're just not able to keep up with that intensity. So in the beginning, you start with longer rests, and then you very gradually decrease the rest. And you'll still get plenty of hypertrophy and strength endurance. Uh, there, there's other systems of doing this, you know. Uh, there, there's 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 other types of exercise where you have these short rests, uh, you know, kettlebells, CrossFit, you know, they make use of this type of metabolic conditioning. And how long do you usually do that for? You said that so twenty you, minutes. Twenty. Oh, so you do okay. So how many how many times a week do you exercise and? Do you have like, you know what, I'm going to do 20 minutes a day minimally plus my, my jujitsu. How do you work that? Once a week. One strength training a week is all you need. More than that may be overtraining. Remember, any amount of training above the absolute minim minimum needed would be considered overtraining. Now, that sounds like heresy in this day and age of people working out every day, twice a day, you know. But there's been plenty of research to support once to two times a week training. And I work out hard enough now. And of course, I'm in my 70s. I don't recover like I used to. So I'm finding that one really hard all out workout. Now, that doesn't mean you're a couch potato the rest of the time. I've been going to uh, teaching and training jujitsu now four or five times a week. And uh, I, make sure that I do my daily Qigong routine. So I'm active, you know. I walk. Uh, here in South Carolina, I haven't walked so much because it's been really hot and humid. I'm not quite used to it yet. But, you know, I've only been here four weeks, so I'm establishing a new uh, routine as far as my activity levels go. But, uh, yeah, you're not, you know, you don't sit around being a couch potato. I also like to do a high intensity interval training where it's just pure cardio stuff. Like I usually use a, uh, a heavy jump rope, get like 10, 15 minutes once a week. But it's not as extensive as what you think. Not extens uh, extensive at all. I, uh, you, you just don't need a lot of training. When the intensity goes up, the frequency must go down. And see, the problem is, it sounds like, Martin, like everyone's used to looking at the YouTube gurus. And what are the YouTube gurus doing? Well, many of them are genetic phenoms with better, way better than average genetics. They look fantastic. And many of these people are in great physical condition despite what they do, not because of what they do, in spite of. And these same people could do any number of things, any number of systems or routines, and still look way better than the average person, including myself. And many of these guys, because they are so genetically gifted, don't have a clue on how to work out regular, normal people. And 
anyone under the age of 60 has no business telling people in their 70s and 80s how to work out. They don't have a clue, man. You know, even guys, you know, 20s, 30s, telling people in their late 40s or 50s, they don't know. They have no idea. They think they're just going to keep going on forever. And here's the thing where I fell short, you know. I used to be like Mr. Kettlebell Guru. I realized kettlebells were a step in the wrong direction because one of the factors I didn't take into account was wear and tear on your joints and your body over time. And I'm telling you, wear and tear is a very real thing. And slinging and throwing weights around, heaving, swinging, haw, you know, that, that's not a good idea. I'm very much into either isometrics, no movement exercise, or slow, controlled movements. It can be very uh, healthy for Matt, you. Matt and Steve, you are one of the first persons I've ever heard say what you just said, which was, Many of those people are giving advice to people of all age groups sometimes, and they just assume that um, everyone's going to look like them if they do that particular exercise. And a lot of people, like you said, they're not taking into consideration a person's health or age or anything else. Or their genetics. I mean, think of it this way. How many really super muscular guys do you see walking around? Not too many, right? You know, like everyone talks about volume versus high intensity. I mean, there's tons of guys out there pumping iron, thousands and thousands. And out of those thousands of guys following, let's say, this movie star's routine or this fitness influencer's routine, how many guys look like that guy? Almost nobody. There's a couple of guys that are also easy gainers or what we call, you know, genetically gifted. And... Yeah, they get unbelievable results. But for every guy that's a success with these programs, there's like 10,000, 100,000 guys doing the same exact thing. They get nowhere. Or even worse, they get hurt. You know, you always hear some exercise is better than no exercise. That's not true. If you're injuring yourself or you're eroding your joint health through stupid exercise, well, no exercise would actually be better for you, you know? So, once again, there are always going to be people that make great progress doing anything. And then on the other, and that's a very small little percentage. And then on the other end of the scale, there's people that no matter what they do are never going to get much in the way of results. That's also a very small percentage. Most of us fall somewhere in the middle either towards the gifted or towards the guys that don't make any progress at all. Somewhere in the middle there, middle of the road. And I'm telling you, trying to emulate the movie star or the athlete or the bodybuilder or the fitness influencer and trying to emulate what they do is always a step in the wrong direction. So what advice do you give, Steve, to someone that says, like, how do I find a good trainer? I'm, you know, I'm, you know, 25 years old, I'm 40 years old or whatever. How do you determine who's a good trainer or a good fit for you? Contact me. I do Zoom sessions. <laughs> uh, there's, uh, there's some really good guys out there. Yeah. Drew Bay. Bay.com. Jay Vincent. Fantastic. Uh, Dr. Doug McGuff. Uh, I would re recommend everyone listening to this podcast, check out that book, Body by Science. He really gets rid of a lot of the, the mythology, you know, behind proper strength training. It does not have to be hours and hours and hours in the gym. It could be a real short, abbreviated routine. You, you still get phenomenal health benefits. For guys that want to get a little bit more serious, you know, obviously – they're going to need a little bit more than the body by science routine. But the point is, you don't need to spend hours in the gym to get a great workout. If your workout's taking more than 30 minutes, then you're probably wasting too much time. Now, that being said, I'm not talking about competitive power lifters, competitive Olympic weightlifters, uh, people that are crossfitters that compete in that particular form of exercise, that's the difference. I'm talking about people that want general health, 
general well-being, and you know, to look their best and feel their best. How much you hypertrophy? It's genetics, man. Yeah, that's that's why I appreciate you, Stephen. And, and at the end, we're going to definitely give out your contact information because, you you know, I think if some of the people out there saw uh, some of your videos and. Man, I, I'm going to tell you, I was showing uh, some of my friends your videos yesterday. I was because I always talk about you all the time. And man, your fitness level is just amazing. And it's because you look at your you kind of like take the holistic viewpoint of your body and, and how important it is. What's the importance of breathing? Well, you know, we always talk about uh, carbohydrates and fats and proteins. And of course, water <laughs> more important than you know you, those nutrients but you don't really think about oxygen as a nutrient but it is you know you can go a couple of weeks or even month without eating you can go about three or four days without drinking but you can't go more than just a few minutes without breathing so using our lung apparatus in an efficient way to oxygenate our bodies becomes important. Because of the way children are raised, they very quickly get into dysfunctional breathing. And they don't use the heart, I mean, they don't use the lungs in a uh, effective manner. They breathe shallow in the upper chest, uh, mouth breathers, not inhaling through the nose. Excuse me. Uh, a lot of sleep disturbances like sleep apnea and snoring and all these type of things are all the result of poor breathing habits. So learning to use your lungs in an efficient manner, I think, is very, very important. And it's, it doesn't have to be rocket science. It's not real complicated. You know, uh, I could recommend some. I, I'd recommend uh, reading about the Buteco breathing. If anyone just looks it up. It's a, it was a Russian scientist. It looks like Butyko, B-U-T-E-Y-C-K-O. I believe that's how you spell it. Might be off there a little bit. But uh, one of his disciples was a guy by the name of, uh, uh, I'm trying to think. Of he wrote this book, The Oxygen Advantage. Really good little book. But uh, but then, you know, there's another version of breathing called the Wim Hof breathing system. It's based on an ancient Tibetan breathing system called uh, Tuma. Uh, if you just look up, you'll see dozens of breathing tutorials. The most important thing is to breathe through your nose, exhale through the mouth, or inhale, exhale through the nose. And make sure you're doing that all the time. Not breathe it from your upper chest, but learn to breathe from the lower lobes of your lungs. The upper chest, upper chest breathing, that's most people. Like you ask them to breathe, you do a self-test, you look in the mirror, and you inhale. If you see any movement through your clavicles or upper chest, you're an upper chest breather. What does that mean? You're in constant stress all the time. You're, you're, you're basically in, in fight or flight because the upper lobes of the lungs are where the panic receptors are. So if you're always breathing up in the chest, and that's so many people in our society, you're always in a constant state of stress, negative stress hormones. And, you know, that puts you in like a constant fat storage mode. Some people breathe in the middle part that's also dysfunctional. We call it intercostal breathing. What you should see when you take an inhale is only just a very tiny bit of movement in the in the, the lower part of the anatomy, in the tummy. Some people call it stomach breathing. It's not really stomach breathing. It's just the lower lobes, the lungs pushing down. But you want the lower lobes, the lungs are the calming receptors. That's rest and digest. And you can train yourself, even in emergencies, to remain calm by maintaining lower lobe breathing in the lungs. And that could be 
really important for a soldier, a law enforcement officer, you know, when you're in like real dangerous situations, or need to control the breath, or need to bring the breath down, or need to maintain uh, lower uh, lobe breathing. So you hear some people say diaphragmatic breathing. Uh, that's kind of uh, oxymoron because all breathing is diaphragmatic. <laughs> Uh, lower low versus upper low. Hey, Steve, what do you give advice for someone who says, you know what, I, I'm i not in, in, in um, I, I'm older or I'm younger and I, I'm, I have some injuries and I'm not able to, to exercise because maybe I, I can't walk as well as I used to walk or, or, or any other issues like that. What kind of advice do you give people to, when they're in those kind of situations? Well, they, they got to maintain their muscle mass. I have a table and chair workout that'd be perfect even for an invalid. I, I worked on an 85 year old woman that uh, uh, was immobilized, and we did a workout right at her table and chair in her kitchen. And she she got really good progress to the point where she started going out and walking and gardening again. And I I, I would say, uh, if you would do the isometric routine, I have a little table and chair workout video. It's pretty simple to do. Uh, But there's other people that have the same thing. You know, they could go and check it out. But not all isometrics are the same. I recommend highly the timed static contraction method, or TSC. Very, very safe, incredibly effective uh, way of doing isometrics. Not only for the older person, but even for an elite athlete. I could... I could really work out even an NFL football player using TSA and give them a fantastic, safe workout that would enhance muscle size, strength, explosivity, everything that he'd want. And then he would go out and practice the specifics of the sport. But for the elders, they don't care about that so much. They just like to be able to maintain their independence by not losing their mobility. And then I would say supplement that by getting out and walking every day. Take a Tai Chi class or a Qi Kong class or a yoga class or just go out and garden, you know. Just go out and do some gardening around the house. Uh, For elderly people that live at home, uh, having a dog is a wonderful thing because the dog needs exercise, you know. It kind of forces you to get out and walk. Keep active. See, what can you explain to our audience? This is one of my last questions because I know you have to go in about five or six minutes. But um, and I appreciate you being here because you're just an amazing person. It's it's always great to talk to you because you lift everybody's spirit when you're around them. So um, we're very lucky on this Friday to have you. Um, can you explain? Um, I know some people that have done isometrics and they say, well, it, it doesn't feel like I'm working out when I'm doing it. Um, Well, there's a difference between traditional isometrics and what I'm talking about. Now, when I was a kid, isometrics were very popular. And uh, the old York Barbell Club, which was the mecca for strength training back in those days, uh, they they advocated isometrics for even a lot of the Olympic weightlifters. And then uh, it came out that some of the test subjects had been using steroids, which were very new. No one knew much about them back in the day, back in the 60s. And everyone said, oh, they got those results from steroids, not the isometrics. And it left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth. But the truth of the matter is, there was tons of German research that supported isometrics as being an excellent way of increasing strength and hypertrophy. But for many people, the old short duration three position isometric holds uh, weren't enough stimulus. It wasn't enough time under load for a lot of people. Some people made good results, some people did it. But with the time static contraction, you, you were, your muscle was under load in the mid range or weak position for 90 seconds. It's a long time, man. And you, you very gradually contract into the, let's say I'm doing a curl. I very gradually contract over five seconds. 
And then I push about half my strength for 30 seconds. And then the second 30 seconds, I'm going 75% of my strength. And then the last 30 seconds, I'm contracting as hard as I dare. Not necessarily as hard as I can. If I start to feel something a little weird or whatever, I'll back off a little bit. But usually I go all out. It's very important to breathe. Shockingly, your heart rate goes up, man. You feel your heart beating. You get really uh, winded like you would run in sprints. It's actually quite metabolically demanding. And then you just go exercise after exercise after exercise. You can get an unbelievable workout. Now, the downside of isometrics is you do need to stretch. You, you, uh, you don't get the range of motion like you do with with isotonic, you know, concentric, uh, eccentric contractions, like with a machine or a barbell, but you'll, you'll get just as strong, absolutely just as strong, build just as much muscle. It's a very effective way of working out, but safe because there's no movement. It does take some mental concentration. Now, I have developed a little device where I had a force gauge. It was like a little... Uh, uh, gauge that I hooked up to my isometric strap and it was connected to my iPad via Bluetooth. So I could actually see on a graph how many pounds I was producing of force. And it would start like, it would start like uh, down and then it quickly go up and then plateau. And then all of a sudden when I would go to like 100%, instead of like going up and up and up, it would actually go down because my muscle was fatiguing and getting weaker and weaker and weaker, which is what you want. The idea of strength training is to weaken your muscle. You start out high and you can produce a lot of force. As you do reps, your muscles get weaker and weaker to the point where it can no longer produce enough force to lift the weight. Same with, thing with isometrics. You start like at a certain point, you go up pretty quick, you plateau off, and then you start going down. That's pretty wild. Well, Steve, I know, like I said, I know I'm going to be respectful of your time because you are one busy person and it's the weekend. So I want you to be able to relax a little bit. But I also want people out there, how can they get a hold of you? Can you give out your website information, your Instagram? Yeah. MaxwellSC.com, and I'm Steve Maxwell SC anywhere on uh, you know on uh, Instagram on uh, Facebook. I have two. I have like a personal page, but I have a professional page also, and I'm always posting stuff up, especially on Instagram. I like it. They 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 can check me out. Hey uh, Steve, can you talk about really quickly what services that you offer? And are you still doing your? Are you still doing the jujitsu seminars around the country? Is that kind of? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Down down here, uh, I found two schools I really like, so I'm I'm working and teaching. Uh, I I just got here, so I'm still getting to know the people around here, but uh, I'll be doing private lessons soon. Uh, I'm really into the old school Gracie Jiu Jitsu self defense, uh, anti assault programs, anti bullying. Uh, uh, a thing called Women Empowered, basically uh, helping women protect themselves against sexual assault. Uh, I also teach just regular competition style BJJ. Uh, and on the fitness I, side, on the fitness side, Steve, you have I, I do I do online personal training. And what uh, I, and do, I, I do Zoom sessions, like we're doing now. Yeah. So what? Uh, so what specifically are you doing on Zoom? What can you do with people on Zoom? Well, it's amazing, you know, especially with isometrics or body weight training. Uh, I'm a minimalist by nature. I'm not into a lot of stuff. I don't like being dependent on a lot of equipment, you know, barbells, dumbbells, uh, fancy exercise machines. They all work. They're all great. I'm not saying they don't. I personally just like being independent and being able to work my body anytime, anyplace, anywhere. And I teach people how to do that, believe it or not, online. It's very effective. Uh, I've taken rank beginners and taught them this isometric system and 
I get rave reviews all the time. Let's put it this way. I've never had a customer. I, I have a money back guarantee and no one's ever wanted it. Hey, well, Steve, I look up to you a lot. You're, you're a great human being. And uh, the wonderful person that works with you is also a wonderful person. So you have to tell her thank you. Yeah, and, um, Teresa's great. Yeah, Teresa's fantastic. And I, and I wish you well. I, I'm glad that you took the time. I know you just recently moved and you've been busy. But um, I, like I said, uh, you're an, an amazing person. And, uh, and I really, really admire your, your focus on, on fitness and vitality and, and longevity. So thank you so much for being on. I really appreciate you. Thank you very much, Martin. I appreciate it a lot. You take care of yourself, my friend. Okay. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.